featuring Mr. Halifa Sala debating Mr. Madi Jobate for what the outspoken activist said earlier in the week about some of our political leaders, including Mr. Sala, as the country finally laid to rest a man widely hailed as a national hero. Let's remind ourselves of what Madi said on Tuesday as part of a taxpayer-funded funeral and tribute ceremony for Solo Sanding organized by the Barrow-led government. The president, Adama Barrow, and, and, and all the um, um, coalition leaders, coalition parties, uh, they benefited from Solo, but they all betrayed Solo. From Adama Barrow to Hussein Udabo, to Halifa Sala, to Sidi Ajata, to Farmata Tambajan, to Asetu Ture, Amai Fati, um, uh, Henry Gomez, and so on. All those uh, coalition leaders, they betrayed Solo. And so it's a shame that they all came here to try to show remorse, to try to celebrate Solo, yet failed to implement the ideals, the objectives which made Solo stand up. So they have all betrayed Solo. And that is very sad. Mr. Sala, Mr. Jobate, welcome to West Coast Radio. And if I may start right away with you, Mr. Sala, um, what is wrong with what we just heard there? What did Madi not get right to warrant uh, this open debate to, I suppose, set the record straight as far as you're concerned? It is my conviction that criticism must be based on truth, good faith, and the public interest, because I am an elderly statesperson. People should criticize me, but based on truth, good faith, and the public interest. What Mahdi said was not true, was not based on good faith, and to mislead the public is not in the public interest. That's why I challenge him to indict me. Okay. Um, Madi, what is Mr. Sala missing uh, in what you were trying to make, uh, the point you were trying to make, and what is that point to begin with? Yeah, to begin with, I think uh, Mr. Sala missed the very things, values that he expressed just now, because certainly I said the truth. Um, Solo Sanding uh, rose up on April 14th. Uh, in his hands, I understand, had the gopher. Um, demands and of course on his placard and in his speech called for electoral reforms this is April 2014 2016 uh, earlier in 2015 um, GOFA that is Gamba Opposition for Electoral Reforms constituted by DOI, UDP, GMC GPDP and NRP um, signed and submitted 11 points for electoral reforms to the IEC, to the President, and to uh, Jesse Jackson, and I think to the United Nations or the AU. The signatories to that uh, petition were Usainu Dabo and Halifa Sala. Now, that GOFA demand goes back to 2012 when that GOFA itself was established. Now, we can go back to 2010. Um, UDP, when Femi Peters in 2009 was sentenced to one year in jail for using a loudspeaker, UDP challenged the Public Order Act in the courts. Um, which decision came later in 2018 by the Supreme Court. Um, earlier, to still go back, in 2001, when the students were massacred in 2000, an indemnity act was put before the bill was put before the National Assembly. At the time, uh, Hamad Ba and Sida Jata were members of the National Assembly. In protest, they marched out to not even discuss that Indemnity Act. Now, these are laws on our elections, laws regarding our freedoms, our rights as sovereign citizens of this country, which have been well captured in the manifesto of Adam Abaro as the candidate of the coalition, and as well highlighted in the MOU of the coalition, so that when we get to 2017, therefore, um, Halifa Salah needs to tell us um, whether uh, he's himself as a National Assembly member, as a member of DOI, and all the political parties that constitute the coalition, uh, whether the coalition exists or crumbled or not, regardless, 
they were the parties that came around the coalition under a president, whether they had um, effected um, the um, that GOVA demands for electoral reforms. So that when we look at the manifesto of Barrow, um, we, on the chapter, a section on democracy and rule of law, they highlighted 22 issues about reforms and other things. Out of that 22, they did only four. That is, to um, um, remove Section 91.1D to secure the tenure of they themselves, the National Assembly members, if they have to leave their seat. Number two, um, to remove Section um, 62 to, about the age limit. Um, now number three, um, the Freedom of Information Act, which came into place uh, eventually. Um, and number four is to... Uh, um, uh, so actually, they, they actually did only three out of the 22. Okay. And when you look at those three directly benefit them as yeah. National Assembly members, as politicians, as political parties. So what untruth, what falsehood mm -hmm. have I said? Okay. And I want to challenge Mr. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll throw the question to him. Thank you, Madi. Uh, Mr. Salah, back to you. Madi has just established, according to him, the truthfulness of what he said on Tuesday. <laughs> what do you find untrue about <laughs> What he said on Tuesday and what he just said what, moments ago. What Madi has said right now proves that my contract with the Gambian people and the Gambian nation has been fulfilled to the letter. Everything he is reading, everything he is reading, including that petition for Jamie to facilitate electoral reform, my hand is there. What he said out of 22 I'm points. Coming, only I'm coming. Three. No, no, no. I'm saying everything he's reading now. My hand is there oh, in okay. drafting it okay. Okay. to the Barrow Manifesto. Everything. I fulfill my contract. He said I betrayed Sandeng. How? He, his proof, Sandeng had what was our petition and call for electoral reform. Young people of the different parties mm -hmm. call each other to talk about demonstration. Did the Doi youth participate in demonstration? No. Why? Because Doi is enlightened and enlightens its people. Section 134 of the amended, as he said, we introduced the petition in 2015. July, what did Jamie do? To come up with a blanket reform of the Elections Act, requiring one million to register political party, 500,000 to be a presidential candidate, 50,000 to be a national assembly member, 10,000 to be a councillor. If you are a resident outside, you cannot lead a political party. So essentially, he was making it impossible for political parties to function. Is that a positive response to our petition? No. So what was our option? 134 says that six months before elections, the National, uh, the Independent Electoral Commission must not engage in any significant change of the Elections Act. So if you go and petition, what he does not know, Peter, yes. on the 14th mm -hmm. of April, yes. I was here with my colleague, Hussein Udabo. We were supposed to engage in a debate. We could not, because we were told that some people were arrested. And your radio station was not willing to take the risk, not knowing what we were going to say. Mm -hmm. It was then that I wanted to pin my colleague that it is good to tell all our people the truth, that he was above 65 and would not be able to stand in the 2016 presidential election. And that 134 has already indicated we cannot change elections act six months before. So it was a hopeless situation. Jammeh will not change 
effect any reform. So the only route was to build a coalition. Unfortunately, we could not enter the debate. Solo was arrested. So, where is our betrayal? If your leaders do not educate you to know what you are supposed to do, and we educate our people to know what to do, and what do we do? We proceeded with coalition building. And on the 2nd of December, 2016, for the first time in Gambian history, we uprooted Gambia. Our tactic and strategy were implemented to the letter. And it succeeded. That is the truth. If anybody betrayed Sandeng, let him look for somebody else, not us. Now, when we took over, We had the objective, clearly spelled out, of a three-year term. But people must understand what an agreement is and what a constitution is. When we appointed or elected Barrow, we had the power to write all those things that we wrote. It's good faith. But when Barrow took over, he took over as the executive president of the Gambia under the constitution of the Gambia. Meaning what? He did not owe any allegiance to any coalition or anybody. He could have only done so in good faith. And we were trying to exploit good faith. But when he took over, all those who were around him encouraged him to build up the executive might of appointing and dismissing ministers at will. An elementary knowledge of our constitution knows that it is cabinet that formulates policy. I had no power to formulate policy. It is the National Assembly that consider bills. We had four members in the National Assembly under the Constitution. You have to have simple majority, two-thirds majority in some portion, or three-quarter majority, such as changing the Constitution, before you can have any effect in the National Assembly. And let me educate him again. You see, they talk and talk and talk, and they don't understand the Constitution. They don't understand the laws. You see, Let me just give you an example quickly because we don't have the time. There is an election bill Mm. currently. If you look at clause 147 of the election bill, it is in line with section 130 of the elections decree 1996, which states that if you want to stand as a candidate, National Assembly election, you you must be granted leave of absence during the period of the election, and you return to your work. That's what the Elections Act 1996 says, 130. 147 uh, uh, 147 of the election bill, that's what it's saying. It wants to introduce that. But the Constitution, Section 170, is saying that you must ask for one year leave without pay. So when these people, and you can see, we, we, unlike Mali, you see, we've written... Me and Sam, a whole analysis of the elections bill to guide the nation. So you see, you can effect the introduction of a bill. The National Assembly can, if they are inexperienced, even pass the bill. And then somebody will go to the Supreme Court and throw it in the dustbin because it is against the provision of the Constitution. All right. Madi, want, no, let me conclude. Okay. Let me conclude just to show that he has no basis of argument. Mm-hmm. You see, for us, there was no basis of any of this reform. The primary thing was the constitutional reform. It was introduced. You were there. Everybody were, were, were heard. Mm-hmm. I told them that what they were doing was a long journey. They were not sincere. That the constitution that we were considering was not like 
1996, when these people had suspended the 1970 Constitution, and they can go into a spree to, to amend anything they want. 1997 Constitution states very clearly that if you want to change it under Section 226, you can only take two routes. The ones that could be changed by the National Assembly without a referendum, and the others that must be changed with a referendum. I said, if we want the journey to be short, let us blanket change those ones that we could change in the National Assembly, and then blanket take those ones to the to referendum. And this was a time when there was at least some understanding between the UDP. They were part of the government. It could have been easily done. They did not take that route. By the time they come again, their internal contradiction had built up. Some had been expunged from the, uh, or removed from the, from the cabinet. And the National Assembly he's talking about was no longer a uniform body of a coalition. It was people elected on their party ticket and they were operating on party lines. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Sala. Madi, yeah. um, Mr. Sala, um, uh, yeah. saying that every, yeah. I uh, get the know, point. all the 22 points actually. Yeah. <laughs> I get know. the point, and, and certainly uh, Mr. Sala can't educate me about the Constitution, with all due respect to him. And in this, uh, I know the Constitution, and uh, he, you know, uh, as much as he does. And uh, what he's presented so far, if anything, is an attempt to mislead me, which also he cannot do. Um, you see, Peter, no one doubts to remove this dictatorship. There's no doubt about that. But this country is a civilized state, I mean nation. We have a state, and the state has obligations. And officials in that state have obligations to perform by law. Now, Mr. Sala, when we got to 2017, he said um, to, um, to the media that he um, does not wish to take a position in the cabinet, that he wants to go to the National Assembly. I can quote him. Um, Fatu Network reported Halifa Sala reveals intention to contest parliamentary elections on 27 February 2017. We need to get, to the, get the best National Assembly that acts as an oversight institution, holds the government accountable and stands for the Gambian people. This is the assembly we want. So, you see, the National Assembly has a purpose. National Assembly members have an obligation. He and his coalition members can argue here who did what and so on. As a citizen, as a sovereign citizen, what I know is Halifa Sala like Adam Abaro and all elected and appointed public officials have a duty towards me to perform. And they have not performed that. Because the evidence is there. The Elections Act, regardless of how much uh, summary or analysis is done, the Elections Act, seven years, is sitting in the National Assembly. It has not been done. Now, you said we uh, look at this constant piecemeal. They didn't do that. But nothing stops Halifa Sala on his own as a National Assembly member, for which he has the power to do, to submit a private member's bill, to target any specific section of the um, uh, Constitution to change. Now, they didn't do that, but Samba Jalo, minority leader at the time, 2017, submitted a, a private member's bill for the changing of 19, uh, uh, Section 91-1D, and they voted for it. The uh, exorbitant fees that Jame imposed regarding, disregarding their 2015 uh, proposals. When they came 2017, they immediately amended that section to reduce the fees for president, national assembly, mayor, councillor. Why didn't Halifa Salah submit a member's bill for a time limit? A member's bill for first pass, I mean, uh, absolute majority. A member's bill for the creation of a constituency boundaries commission which are all established, I mean, stated in their manifesto. So, have you forgot to understand this? All right? And because I see a lot of um, misleading stuff um, around, that regardless of what happened until 2017, 2017, when they drafted... Uh, 16, they drafted that MOU and the uh, coalition. And Halifa went on the campaign talking about the value of the three years program to end self-perpetuating rule, to build. In 2019, October, he was standing on the floor of the parliament explaining how the coalition crumbled, that they want to save the Gambia. 
Halifa did not go to the National Assembly on the ticket of the coalition. He went there in his own personal volition. He chose to be a National Assembly member. He went on the ticket of Doi. Perform your function as a National Assembly member. You have an individual responsibility. Each one of them have an individual responsibility to perform their functions. Now, apart from this lack of legal reforms, institutional reforms, you look at the Auditor General's report. The massive corruption. The number of uh, illegal unconstitutional actions by this president. National Assembly members, you have a, an obligation. You have the power and the tool in the constitution to discipline the executive. The president has multiple times conducted unconstitutional acts and he wasn't held to account to the point that even the Supreme Court declared the president's action unconstitutional in the case of Yakum Bajet. There was no genuine, urgent matter to put articles of impeachment on the floor of the National Assembly for that action because the Supreme Court itself said the president acted unconstitutionally. So our coalition political parties and their leaders who came to acquire the executive and the legislature, they had the powers in the constitution, in the standing orders, in order laws of the Gambia, to protect the Gambia, the best interests of the Gambia. But that has not happened. Halifa himself was the chair of the PEC committee, the Public Enterprises Committee. There is not, there is not a more corrupt sector of Gambian society than the public enterprises. Not only corrupt, but inefficient. And it was Halifa's duty to make sure our public enterprises, their enterprises, businesses, to, to raise revenue for the government. They don't do that. They don't pay dividend. Not only that, they don't perform, deliver the services they are supposed to perform. And not only that, they are so corrupt, they mismanage public resources. It's in the uh, Auditor General's report, 2017 and 2018. So, look, uh, Halifa inspired me personally. All right? And I have said and every day that the Dwight agenda, Dwight idea, not only for Gambia, but Africa, that is it. But as he said at the beginning, he is a public official. He has to be held to account. And let Halifa humble down to realize that he's not invaluable. And to take an honest, impartial review analysis of his own performance and the performance of all of them. And then he will realize definitely they failed the Gambia from 2017 to 2023 20, 20, right now. Okay, so the debate seems to have moved from Halifa and the coalition members betraying um, uh, Solo Sunday. It's all within that to, context. To, to now about it's all his, within that context. his performance while he was of a course. member of the National Assembly. Yes, we held account. Okay, let me come back to you, Mr. Sala. By the way, you're listening to Coffee Time with Peter Gomez. We are live on West Coast Radio 92.1 in the Gambia. A special program in which Mr. Sala is debating uh, Madi Jobate. Um, Mr. Sala, how do, you, how, how do you react to everything well, that has been said in the well, last I, five, ten minutes? I, I really am more comfortable now after hearing what he has to say. If that is what he said, trying to indict me for my performance in the National Assembly, we would not have had this debate. I would have just considered what he said and determined whether it is relevant or not. You know, I would not have wasted my time. Just, just, just allow me. Just allow me. Just allow me. But it is this element that I have betrayed Sanding, which I wanted cleared, and I believe that is clear. Now my record. You see, this is the problem with people like Marty. They are misleading a whole generation. If you go to the United States now, you will discover that any sitting congressman, senator, will be followed for how you vote in that Congress, the views you express in that Congress. We're not talking about utopia. These people are talking about utopia. I can understand them, that I can go in the National Assembly, put private members' bill, they kick it out. I will be showing. That's Mahdi. Just show that you are doing something. I'm not made of that stuff. That's not me to go just to show. When I knew my constituency, we were only four in the National Assembly. We had no power in the National Assembly. And we knew who had power. And we knew their thinking. 
we knew their orientation. Just look at the local government act when they aim to change that provision so that when you dispense a person from a party, automatically you will not lose your, your, your seat in government. Clearly, that idea was complete separation of power, uh, of party and state, and that's what should happen. A party helps a person to get to office. But once you are in office, you are a state official. So how can a party be allowed to remove a state official from office? It does not make sense. It's not a separation of party and state. But you can see the struggle in the National Assembly to amend that particular provision. That's the National Assembly we had. And he keep on repeating coalition. This was not a coalition National Assembly. He knows. The voting pattern in the National Assembly, he knows. There was nothing about coalition in that National Assembly. Everybody knows that. True, yeah. So it is Mari who is trying to throw dust in people's eyes. And he's the one who has been misleading himself and a whole generation. We didn't have a coalition. So essentially, and at the same time, you had an executive president who could even dismiss his vice president without giving any reasons and constitute his cabinet as he wished. My God. That is the executive. This was not coalition executive. So forget about the coalition. After Baru assumed office, it was no longer in existence. He can judge me by my own performance. But I can tell him, if he goes to the record and examine what I said and what I did in every stage of deliberation in the National Assembly, my colleagues will know that I was an asset to the National Assembly and that I had contributed my quota to the best of my ability and, in fact, in the national interest. So, to me, I believe... But he, but he says you didn't hold the SOEs, state-owned enterprises, to account as you should, Again, as, chair, as chair of I, that particular... What, what the reality is that this was being broadcast. Our proceedings were being broadcast as chair of the Public Enterprise Committee. He was hearing the broadcast. Who on earth will say that we did not hold them into account? We, you know, the problem of those SOEs, you can see the, the backlog. If you know elementary auditing, you know, if you don't close your account and then come up with the next account, how can we ever hold such an institution into account? Because nothing was current. We were dealing with history, and we were trying to move from history to currency. That was my role. And yes, he can criticize, but I feel I have done what I could do to the best of my ability to push those public enterprises into currency so that they can be properly held into account. But essentially, what they have also failed to realize is that the issue of corruption is fully under the control of the audit. What they don't know is that the Auditor General, even though you have external auditors, all of them were under the control of the Auditor General. And the Auditor General, under the Constitution, has full powers that wherever corruption emerges to ensure that the the uh, uh, police are involved in investigation and that action is taken. It is not the National Assembly that takes people to court. The National Assembly can make recommendations. And obviously, what I can say with Mahdi, as he has moved, drifted into other issues, is that, well, is this legitimate to look at my, my record? I feel that I have not done he what said, I'm... He said you are not infallible. Did you ever claim infallibility? <laughs> well, I, I think what I said at the beginning makes it clear that if he was just criticizing, I will look at it. Whatever is of substance, I may consider. Mm. What is not of substance, yeah. we yeah. put it in the dustbin. Yeah, so we Peter... We have no qualms. Definitely. Um, first of all, to take great ob uh, objection uh, to Halifa's attempt to caricature me. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. I, I'm, okay, let me, let me, let yeah. me, let me, let me. He's apologized. Let, let me apologize. I accept the apology. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now, moving forward, um, 
Alors, moving forward, you see, again, misleading and dodging responsibility, um, giving excuses and blaming others is what Halifa has been presented. In the U.S., congressmen and women, they submit bills. There are bills, laws in the United States, named after individuals. Hems bought in law, for example. So, a National Assembly member, this is in the standing orders, it's in the Constitution that you have that obligation, that power, to submit a bill. So there is nothing wrong to submit a bill, and it is not a showmanship. So, you know, Alifa, the National Assembly has a purpose, listening to you. I begin to wonder, then why did you go to the National Assembly? In fact, why do we should, why should we have a National Assembly? Therefore, because the National Assembly has our lives are in the hands of the National Assembly, practically. You have the powers. So, we have to hold them accountable. And, again, that misleading comment that I am thinking in terms of the coalition, I know the whole story of the coalition. And in my piece, I had written that they, coalition parties and politicians, individual and collectively, it is today because Halifa is sitting here. If Usani Dabo sits here today, I will hold him to account. If Adam Abaro sits him here, I'll hold him to account personally. And so, regarding the SOEs, you see, the National Assembly has powers to end corruption. But they did not do it. The Auditor General in 27, when he submitted his report 2021, he said in February 2021, the National Assembly Finance and Public Health Committee met to discuss the report and submitted recommendations to follow up on the prior year issues that, re that remained unresolved, as well as crucial findings in the May 2017 audit report. The Constitution is very clear. The Auditor General submits to the National Assembly. The National Assembly can cause more investigations and prosecutions for accountability. But they don't do that. The National uh, Audit Report 2018 or 17 indicated government of the Gambia in 2017 provided loans to state-owned enterprises amounting to 11 billion. There was a time, this was the time the 66 million in the special security account was talked about all over the place. But citizens forgot to realize, in fact, our state-owned enterprises, 11 billion. Now, from 2017 to date, the only public enterprise I have had provide a, a dividend to government is sports. In 2018 or 19, uh, 5 million dollars. In 2020, in the heart of the COVID, 95 million dollars. How do we explain that? So, the purpose of Halifa Sala and all those National Assembly members is to make sure ports, Gamtel, Gamsel, GNPC, and so on, deliver services, not just service, quality services to all Gambians. That is not taking place. If you have a house today in Boraba, you want electricity down there, the Navag will tell you, buy your own poles. You know, dig your own ground to, to get water to your house. Why? A taxpaying, a citizen of this country, a public institution. So what has been the effect, the value of our National Assembly members? From 2027 to 2021, of which Halifa was a key member. You mean from 2017 yes. to 2021? So I am saying, coalition or no coalition, the parties that came together to remove Jame in 2017, coalition or no coalition, MOU or no MOU, manifesto or no manifesto, they have a duty to make sure there is good governance in this country. There is sustainable development in this country. But that full tenure, 2021, 2017 to 2021, was an abysmal failure and a betrayal of somebody like Solo, who rose up, got his, himself killed because he was fighting for electoral reforms. Why on the first day, those electoral reforms, the government demands, 11 of them, were not put on the floor of the parliament by Halifa Sala or, I mean, KK Barrow or, I mean, um, you know, Alaji S. Dabo or uh, uh, Samba Jallo, I mean, or Tumanjai, you know, or Yakum Bajate, and so on. Why did they put it on the floor of the parliament? Okay. okay. Mr. Sala, maybe to answer it in a different way, how has 
the fifth legislature contributed to electoral reforms in this country. And before you ask us that, if you would just bear with me, Halifa, just one line. In, on July 6, 2021, Halifa Salah spoke on the floor of the parliament about his committee. He said, before 31st December 2021, our committee is well positioned to put an end to the historic backlog in the submission of the activity report and financial statement stretching from the year end 2015, reported in the foraya. National Assembly Public Enterprise Committee Chair explains. But today, you go to National Assembly, you will not see a report of the PEC committee for that period, and Halifa is not in the parliament anymore. That is gross failure. Every public, I mean, every committee of the National Assembly should submit a, a report, annual report of the performance of your functions. Particularly the two, for me, most critical co committees, the FPAC and the PEC. Okay. They are at the heart of our accountability, our governance, and our development. Okay. Uh, let's start with um, that criticism of PEC because that's uh, near a home, if you like, uh, before we go on now to talk about the achievement of uh, the fifth legislation. So two things, then we go to PEC. Mm -hmm. Section 160, subsection 5 of the Constitution says, where discrepancies of a criminal or fraudulent nature are discovered during the audit accounts by the Auditor General, he or she shall immediately cause a report of his or her finding to be submitted to the Inspector General of Police. I am saying, as far as corruption is concerned, the Auditor General has full powers to address it from any public institution. That is the issue. Number two, PEC. I have said, and it is clear, that we met a PEC with backlog up to 2014. My own responsibility, I was convinced that unless we put an end to that backlog, we will not be able to be current in our criticism of those institutions. Because the institution is not only to expose but to put them on a very sound footing. And before we left, up to 2019, we had put everything in place, and what we have done in our handing over notes, I will go back and talk to my colleagues to see how far they have gone. But as he rightly said, by the time we finish our report, and it's a five-year report. And it had to be a five-year report. One-year report is history. It's talking about 2014, 2015, 2016, when we were not National Assembly members. What is the use? So we were building up a stock to be able to provide a five-year report. By the time we finished 2015 to, 20, uh, 24, 2015 to 2019, we had come to the end of our term. And I had promised those who are now responsible for PEC that any time they want to meet me, I can meet them, and we can find a way of submitting the report in another way. Because reports of the National Assembly are not the property of chairpersons of the National Assembly. They are properties of the National Assembly, and they have to be approved by a committee. We had a committee. So... I had said that, and he can go and find out from the very inception of, the, of this legislature that I'm willing to meet the chairman, then we can organize a forum where the submission to that report can be given officially because they would be asking for it. I cannot submit it officially now. And obviously, you will see that it shapes the whole public enterprise structure architecture of the country. And we hope that when they concede to that, we'll invite. Well, that, that, that has to be yeah, well, the I'm most important report uh, as far as the SOEs, um, the administrations are concerned. And I think that that report should be prioritized. So what will it take? What, what will it take for you and, uh, you know, the six legis legislature to work together to, to, to get this report done? Well, he can go back and talk to the chairman and see whether I had not approached them to so that they should invite me for a discussion. Oh, you've approached them already? 
But okay, let's not put them in the picture. Let's deal this thing with me. I don't want him to divert. Oh, yeah. me. Let me say, let me say, yeah. let me say mm-hmm. that I have no qualm mm-hmm. in being taken to task on that matter. Okay. And the National Assembly is listening to me. The chairman is listening to me. They are p- people of good faith. And uh, I, 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 I am ready to cooperate with them so that we can at least carry out our national function. But what I'm emphasizing is how Madi continues to accuse me of betraying my function because I've not taken a bill in the National Assembly. I have said that I went to the National Assembly not to be an ordinary National Assembly member. I went there for a transformative agenda. That's what I campaign. I went there thinking that the coalition will function and that I will help in the constitutional reform process, transitional justice process, and the process of ensuring that the Human Rights Commission would be so empowered that human rights violations will come to an end. I went there to work as part of a team And no one doubts that when it came to the discussion of the Constitution, I played my major role. What do you think of the Human Rights Commission? Do you think it has been empowered in such a manner that uh, human rights abuses, you know, well, gross human rights abuses could be stopped in this country? You see, what is important is to realize that it's just an act of the National Assembly. This should have been fused into the Constitution as a structure of the Constitution, a peace council, human rights council, all should be part of just like the Independent Electoral Commission and giving all the powers needed. Okay. That is not there. Yeah. And, and, and you look at the, for example, what he is saying, there are certain things that no one could have done more without the constitutional reform process. Certain things like? Look at the NIA. They tried to change their name to SIS. But in the Constitution, it continues Section 191 is national. So you must yeah. amend the Constitution before Absolutely. you talk about it. So, so, and they so. did not want to have arresting powers and all this. Mm-hmm. So essentially what I'm saying, the principal document was the Constitution. And I went to the National Assembly for one term, is what I promise, so that we can carry out that process of constitutional reform, institutional reform. I was marooned in the National Assembly, and I did my best. Let him tell the truth. If you look at bills, how many bills came to to the National Assembly? How many bills were referred to PEC? What we did as PEC? His argument is you should have sponsored a private member bill. Well, I'm saying, and I'll I'll repeat that, I did not go to the National Assembly to make a show. I went to be a substantive National Assembly member when I finished what I could do mm-hmm. under those circumstances. Okay. That's why I departed. Peter, Peter, yes, yeah, Peter um, I mean, uh, again, a bunch of misleading uh, statements from Halifa. And uh, um, I, I don't need to remind Halifa that the National Assembly has four functions. They have a lawmaking function, they have an oversight function, they have a representation function, and they have a resource distribution function. So to equate presenting a bill as showmanship is a misleading comment because that is a function of the National Assembly. So any function you perform of the National Assembly, you are not doing showmanship. No, 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 Halifa, I... Could I clarify? I am not saying taking a private member's bill is showmanship. I am saying Halifa Salah, Mm -hmm. who went to the National Assembly for substantive transformation of the nation, constitutional reform, would have been engaged in showmanship by taking a bill and saying we want to a uh, time limit, taking Peter, another okay. bill, to they say, I'm, sorry, I am saying Halifa Sal, I'm not saying National Assembly members. I okay. hope that was clear. I, 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 I did not, not say that. I did not also say that. You no. said to put a bill before it's a showmanship no, for I, you, I, not I mean, for everyone, for, for you. Him, yes. So that's what I mean. So I'm not misleading anyone. Okay. And I don't mislead, uh, mis, misquote me too. I did not say that that is your only purpose there or you fail simply because you did not present a bill. That is one of your functions that I said you failed to do, like many others also failed to do. But you failed in the very purpose you said to cure that. That is transformation uh, or, or, or the transformative agenda. Because it is not just presenting bills, it's just lawmaking. Your oversight functions, 
to check the executive, to discipline the executive, to make sure public wealth is used for the public interest. That no one plunders public wealth. You failed in that responsibility. So you should have resigned, probably, so, before. So what could he have done um, that he hasn't done? He has failed to do the oversight. One, uh, as chair of the PEC, Khalifa should have uh, received Auditor General's reports. He has received reports from public enterprises. He has seen lapses. He should have taken up those lapses, recommend either to the police or to some other authority but or investigate. But he says that's the Auditor General's No, 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 no. No, no the Auditor General submits to the National Assembly. The National Assembly, they review, and National Assembly is the supreme decision-making body in this country, Peter. So the National Assembly has, also, and they have done that in some instances to uh, uh, refer matters to the police. National Assembly can do that. National Assembly, uh, Halifa should have done that. That wasn't done. So he has allowed, therefore, SO is to continue to plunder our wealth. Not to mention many other unconstitutional illegal acts of the executive, such as the uh, supplementary appropriation bills, which are all unconstitutional, the declaration of state of emergency during the COVID, which we are unconstitutional, the violation of those declarations by President Barrow at that time are not held to account. We saw in UK how the UK parliament held to account their prime minister for violating a COVID restriction. So Halifa could have done a lot more. So that transformation he's talked about, he did not do that. The legal reforms, why? We, they, still, they, the government, they call it SIS. But this entire security sector reform. As a National Assembly member, he could put a motion on the floor of the parliament to tell the Minister of Interior, Minister of Justice, bring this act for review. The Police Act, the NIA Act, the Government Armed Forces Act, the Prisons Act, uh, and so on. He just told you that doing that for him... No, no, he is misleading that part because Halifa knows... Halifa knows... Let me put it... That he does not understand National Assembly procedures. Al- Alifa, I understand okay, National Assembly. Nobody okay. understands okay, National Assembly explain. in this, let me in this country let more me than ex- me. Let me explain why. Let him explain. He says the National Assembly has powers to send somebody to this police station for corruption. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would want him to show me which section of the Constitution gives the National Assembly that power. But can you? He will not be able to produce it. That's why he's just talking. Number two. National Assembly has committees. And it is the committees that are responsible for engaging the ministries and reviewing everything they are doing. He, again, he's not informed. I'm part of the Defense and Security Committee. And all these institutions have already drafted their bills draft bills on reforms of their legislative dimensions. So the security sector reform process has been monitored by that committee, and they engage the security forces on a continuous basis. One time, they were all asked to come and submit all their strategic plans, all their laws for review. So for me, I feel that if you ask my colleagues in the committees whether I had performed my function, I believe they will say, yes, I have performed my functions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mr. Salah. Uh, Madi, I see you have the Constitution in your hand. Can you quote a section where it says the National Assembly or its committees have the right to, um, you know, take... SOEs. Uh, in fact, the committees do not have power to act independently. The only power they have is to report to the general body and make recommendations. And if approved, that is the position of the National Assembly. In fact, the committees are not even supposed to discuss their, their reports until it is submitted to the National Assembly. So yeah. I don't know why he would say that the committees could send people, you know, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, Have the you national, found the section of the, the Constitution? That, um, yeah, uh, under the section of the Auditor General. Uh, the Auditor General submits reports to the National Assembly um, under Section um, 160, um, uh, sub 4, okay, um, or 224. Two, now, the, under this section, the National Assembly um, has the powers to make um, inquiries or to call witnesses that are mentioned. We wish you a 
That are mentioned. As the computer telling us it's time, it's time to go. So, go ahead. Yeah, that, that are mentioned to subject them to an inquiry. Now, it is out of that, in the preceding section, that the Auditor General uh, has the power to take things to the, uh, to the police. And yes, it's the Auditor General that if he finds anyone, uh, of any discrepancies by anyone, can take the matter to the police. But what I'm just saying, no, no, um, uh, Peter, yeah. when you understand the laws and norms of the Parliament, the National Assembly, it is within their powers to ask any public institution. So when you say theirs, then it means the, the whole parliament. The parliament yes, no, the whole, but that's come to the process. Would so you allow example, me to help you? No, 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 no I, I, I don't need that. The point is, okay. um, as, chair, as, as, as uh, chair of the PEC, and these massive discrepancies have been found out, the, National, I mean, the Auditor General, um, as he said, has the power to take the matter to court, I mean to, to, the, I mean, to the IGP. But at the same time, PEC, knowing the functions of PEC, PEC can recommend. Because PEC, when they review, they submit their report committees to the floor, and in that report, their findings and recommendations, they make them there. So PEC equally has the power to make recommendations to either the Auditor General or to the IGP that based on the Auditor General's report, based on other reports we've received, investigate Gamtel, investigate Nawek, and so on. Okay. And that has been, that was not done. Okay. All right. We uh, have to bring this debate. Uh, yes, to, but it to, must uh, be yeah. clear, I think it must be clear, that there is no provision in the law that empowers parliament to send somebody, somebody to the police station. This is separation of powers. What is important is to know that parliament can recommend for action to be taken. It can recommend special audits. It can recommend the Auditor General to take the actions that the Auditor General had proposed in, in a document. Yes, it can make recommendations. What essentially I am emphasizing is that the legislator he's talking about did shape this country. It is the legislator that could call ministers who must come to appear before committees. He talked about the state of emergency. In fact, I put up a motion at that time because the, the law is very clear. It says that, yes, declare a state of emergency, but within seven days, if we are sitting, 21 days, if we're not sitting, you must bring the motion for adoption by two-thirds majority. When they fail to do that, I put up a motion. And I saw Madi criticizing me. Somebody put up a motion that the president must come and report to parliament. No, and, and, and he's saying that that person was I, I right. I not criticize you on He that, said no. that person was right. I, I knew that nobody can force the executive to come to parliament because Section 77 yeah. has provided the vice president to no, be a no, representative. No, no, so no, you can't. You can't. Section 77A. Um, nobody can compel the president to come to the, to the, to, to the national. Show me the law. Read it. Let the whole nation hear what you have to say. The 77 two states the National Assembly may request the President to attend the sitting of the National Assembly for the discussion of a matter of national importance. Yes, may, may. May. Is it saying shall? Then no, go no, further. Then no, go no, further. No. Then go further. Don't, don't. Further is about the Vice President. Just read. Uh, the Vice President shall answer in the National Assembly for matters affecting the President. The vice, is it? No, no, no. Read it again. Don't mislead the public. We are talking about read the Constitution. The Vice President shall answer in the National Assembly. Shall. Shall. Okay, yes. go ahead. Go ahead. Do you know what shall means in law? I it's know. mandatory. Mandatory. But may no, is not no, mandatory. No, no, no. no. Let, let, us, let uh, me clarify Peter, this may issue. This no, no, no. This I, man I'm, I'm saying, has no, no. been misled. No, no, I should not use misleading. No. Because he does no. not want that. No, no, I, 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 no you can't say that. No, no, right? no. It's not no, fair. No, no. Uh, Peter, when the Constitution says may, the National Assembly may, it's an option that the National Assembly has. They yeah. may. But so, the moment they do, no, the moment they do, no, shall. the president has no option but to come. No, 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 no. Read the second no, one. No, Read the no, second no, one again. The second one is what you're talking about. Say it. The, no, Read it. it. No, no, I have said it. Read it. It was section Read 77. It. Read it. Sorry, Read it. Just, 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 no, just, no, no, no. Read two. No, no. Read two. You, you want to mislead. You, uh, and, you want to mislead. That's no, why he does not want to no, read two. Okay, Read two. Two says the National Assembly may request. Three says the Vice President shall. Shall. Answer. Is it not clear? May. No, 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 no. Let us clarify this here. May and shall. 
may request. Yes, you can request no. for the president to come. And if you request for the president to come, he has no choice. Three. He has to come. Wait, three. What does it say? Three. Three, three says the vice president shall answer in the National Assembly for matters affecting the president. Now, is that, that is only saying, that is only saying the vice president has the authority, the power, the responsibility to represent the obligation. Pre- obligation to represent the president in the National Assembly. That is very different. And must come. From, and must come. That's very different from two, which two is saying the National Assembly may, meaning the National Assembly may do it or they may not do it. If it if but they the do moment it, they do it, it's a constant provision. No, he sends the vice president. The vice president, no, no, it's not, he cannot, but, I mean, delegate the vice president in that instance. If is they that, invoke is Section 772. Is that what that, 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 uh, that clause that says? Is, three, that, three is not saying that. No, okay. th- three, if you go to even four, it will say the vice president or, or, mini, or a minister shall, when requested by the National Assembly. So, Shall is the mandatory. President he has must. Two the yeah. president That's why has we two must options. force ministers the to come. The president can either come himself or the president can send the vice president based on three. But yes. based on two, when the National Assembly makes the call that Mr. President come, the president cannot say, no, I won't come and send no, the vice president. It doesn't say that, man. It doesn't say that. It gives the, the, the House the option to ask the president yes, to, to come. come. And even after asking the president to come, it does not say because they have asked the president to come, he, he must come. come. No, no, no. The, the, the assembly it can insist that the president In fact, it says it's the vice president who should it doesn't represent. Say that. The president is not a king. And Halifa knows democratic norms so, and, and utopia values. Utopia again. All right? This the pres- no, this is a republic. Utopia. No, no, no. I, I, utopia. I think this is a republic. You're not speaking the language of the law. You, are, you, are, you know, well, okay, it's good true. that I'm, I'm I, okay. Let's not criticize Madi. No, no, for, criticize me. For, for, for being don't, so, don't, so don't. enthusiastic mm. and uh, so vigorous in pursuing what is his principles. Mm. I rep- res- respect him for that. I told him that several times. But essentially, I'm an elderly person mm-hmm. with a gray hair. Mm. I cannot go back to that type of, 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 of orientation where I can speak outside of laws, do things outside of uh, what is reasonable and justifiable in a democratic society. Mm -hmm. Essentially, uh, I think this convergence should continue on a new plane. Mm -hmm. We should not continue to attack each other or betray anybody. Betrayal is a very serious word, especially a solemn occasion like an official burial ceremony for Sunday. He's attacking us that we went there, uh, and we were hypocrites, sort of. But essentially, people went there because they felt what happened. Sandin did not want to be a hero of anybody. Sandin should not have died the way he did. The country is a republic. The duty of a republic is to protect the citizens. And the instrument of the state should be an instrument of protection, not instrument of coercion and oppression. Both of us will agree with that. So each of us should have indicted the state that existed and worked to ensure that such a state is eradicated, that we put in its place a state that protects its citizens. I would tell him that I... I'm not infallible. That's why I left the National Assembly, because I look at my constituency and see how it is rotting. And all I can do there in the National Assembly is to criticize, explain, call the minister to ask questions. For me, I know that unless we can build sovereign national wealth that can address the needs and aspirations of the people, we'll just be criticizing what a state that depends entirely on loan. Just imagine you are taking almost 12 billion just as grants and, and budget support. And what you contribute only in taxes, maybe about 13, 13 uh, in your revenue is about 13 billion. And over 12 billion of that will be just tax. Only 1.5 billion will be something that is not known tax. So we do not have a productive state. We can agree on that. We can do all the criticism we can, but that state can never deliver. That is why I stand for system change. In that national assembly, I could not go continue to repeat that over and over again, so I had to do productive things that serve the interests of the national assembly, and I think they appreciated it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Salah. Uh, Very nice words to end.
uh, with Madi? Yeah. Um, uh, um, it's, 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 uh, it's sad, um, Peter. Um, this country is 50-something years old. The conditions in which our people live. 58 this year. Is, is utterly unacceptable and inexcusable. And it is squally because elected and pop, I mean appointed public officials have failed this country. Every day, especially on Tuesday, you bring public officials here and they give narrative upon narrative only to give us explanations and excuses as we've just heard from Halifa. Yet our people continue to live in misery, in destitution, in poverty. And those public officials continue to live the life they live above us. And, and look. Sir? Yeah. No, I mean, and this is the reality. This because he, he confirmed himself him, that his constituency... If I wanted to indict him, whilst I was doing you know, all the things to change 2016, this man was in Europe. Uh, doing what, what I could what, do. What were you doing there? What were you no, no, doing no, no, there? No, 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 no. That, he, is, he that, is, that is he a very studying. unfair... He that is a very unfair... Whilst we and a very facing, dishonest criticism. I was facing... Right? You were man. doing what you were I, doing. I could have died. And everyone was doing for him, what they could for do. For him, he was out there. Yes. It uh-huh. is this man now who is criticizing us for being disloyal. Let's, let's I'm not tell saying you are disloyal. I'm saying you let's have failed. Failing? What is failing? The country from 2017 to 2021 Madi, has elected and appointed public officials. You have not even served the country not to talk about failing a Fine. country. Fine. I am serving the country. I don't have to be elected to serve the country. <laughs> I'm serving the country. With words. Yes. I'm chair. Yes. Well, words are powerful. Words change. That's okay. Words bring change. And you know that, Halifa. That is uh, armchair activism. Well, I did not see you pick up we arms. We went I completely to organize up. structures and change this country in 2016. I have built structures. I change. have built structures all my adult life in schools, in communities, enlightening people, but in public not, institutions. You are so not I proving, have done my part in this country. You are country, now proving and I'm so proud, proud that of. you are an armchair activist because no, you are no. indicting people if, if, who if, concretely had proven. That if I am an armchair activist, to you are no more, country. you are equally an armchair politician. Because well, okay, I have fine. done the political education you have done. I have built structures in this country. I have done uh, on my own resources and at uh, an official capacity. Okay. So, good luck. You are elected. I am holding you to account for your ele- I mean, position in public service. All and I you have to hold each and the every... young people of this country should m- take, tell Madi to give account. Where he was in 2016. I am ready for that debate by any young person in, on not, any platform, any time. N- n- where he was in 2015. Start asking him you to give you account. You want to tell me every Gambian who was what, out of this country in 2016 that what, did not contribute anything? What, no, what I have not said anything. I'm saying why should my let the young people in the between hold you into account when Jammu was here. When Jammu was here, what, what you Peter were doing is my witness. and how you were engaging Jammu. I have confronted Jammu. I have confronted Jammu. Peter Gomez is my uh, witness. We were together at Redo Gambia. They sacked him two weeks. I resigned. Not to mention the many, I mean, uh, uh, protestations I, I did at Redo Gambia. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. I'm sure this debate will continue elsewhere. You've been